hey what is up guys and welcome back to the channel so another car review this time we have something a little bit well i say a little bit modern basically one of the most modern cars in gran turismo and uh, something a little bit special um i believe this is the first racing game this car has featured in and uh yeah kind of cool to uh to see it in the flesh and uh, really have a deep dive into this car i'll admit it's been a car that i've kind of overlooked i have used a couple of times uh, but in general i didn't really kind of give it a chance properly and uh, it was kind of cool to finally uh, get a proper proper drive in it so this is a nissan z performance 23 so an upcoming car obviously it runs in a long line of legendary cars such as you know you've got the 350 the 370 and uh, all the other classics so definitely has the lineage i guess um, and it's available for 29,660 credits, so very, very cheap and very affordable. So before we get into the main review, let me talk you through how this series works. So straight away, we will get the standard car out on the Nordschleife layout of the Nürburgring, set it on a one lap, hot lap, and uh, you know we have no tuning upgrades, no aero upgrades, basically in its bog standard out of the box form, out of the box tune as well, so we can't tune it and uh, we kind of see where it's at. I will keep minor errors in, such as running wide, uh, maybe getting on the grass and such. If it has a big, big crash, um, then obviously I would obviously do re redo the lap. Um, but just minor things, that's kind of down to how the car handles or performs. Um, I will keep those in. It doesn't have to be the most clean lap in the world. It's basically to test the car at one of the most recognizable tracks in the world. After that, then we go and modify it if it's a road car and uh, basically try and make the craziest version of the car we can within Gran Turismo 7, which now has its own lap time leaderboard around the high speed ring. So that will come after the uh, standard version review. So with all that being said, let's get into the main review of this car. So obviously this car has come along to basically take over from the 370Z. Um, which has been around for a long, long time at this point. Um, I remember back in the day, the first time that car came out with its kind of boomerang shaped lights, I thought it was absolutely awesome. And uh, it very closely resembled the car before that, which was the 350Z, um, which is one of probably the most iconic JDM cars of all time, thanks to games like, you know, Need for Speed Underground 2 and such. And uh, I believe it was Need for Speed Undercover was the first time the 370Z had ever featured in a game and uh, it was absolutely awesome to kind of drive there and it's been kind of a mainstay for you know over a decade in uh, racing games since then it's become i wouldn't say on the kind of levels of you know some of the older z cars something like the one before it the 350z um, or the classics you know i believe it's like the 280z uh, back in the day and um, i don't feel like it's kind of gone to those kind of levels um, however, it has kind of held its own and uh, been a very sort of useful car in many racing games over the last decade. However, this car has now come along. So I believe this car won't actually be released until next year worldwide. Now you can correct me if I'm wrong, um, but I'm sure that is the plan. And I believe this is the first time it's ever featured in a racing game. And if I kind of went off how it felt in Gran Turismo, then I'd definitely, you know, be looking into buying one myself. Uh, sadly, I don't think it's actually coming to my country in the United Kingdom. Um, I think it's kind of, you know, staying in Japan and places like America and such. Uh, I may be wrong about that, but I did hear that originally. Um, you can definitely see when it comes to the styling choices, it's got that typical Z look, but it's kind of very modern and very updated. However, the rear lights are definitely looking like a callback to the 300 ZX. Um, those awesome kind of looking rear lights and they really do look really cool. Um, I definitely prefer them over the lights that they were using on sort of like the 350 and the 370. So styling wise, I think it looks great. I'm definitely more of a fan of the rear end than I am the front end. I think the, uh, the big wide grille just kind of looks a bit off to me. Um, but I do feel like over time it will kind of, you know, grow on me. Uh, but it's definitely a looker and it's kind of kept that, you know, awesome looking coupe shape that all the Z cars have always had. So let's talk about some of the performance specs on this car. So it is putting out 400 brake horsepower, which is no slouch. 
and it is running on a three litre twin turbocharged engine uh, a v6 i believe and to me that is just absolutely insane specs i mean back in the day if you were someone kind of running a v6 in the car you thought yeah there's no way that's kind of putting out more than 200 brake horsepower so you know the fact that we're in well it'll be 2023 when this is released and um, the fact that they can get like 400 brake um in what is kind of an affordable sports car um, with twin turbo chargers um, just absolutely blows my mind that you know how far along performance has come since times like the you know the 90s the you know early 2000s I feel like in this last I'd say decade or so we've had a massive boom in performance of all types of cars from you know things such as sports cars hot hatches and such um, yeah it's absolutely crazy so this thing will also hit 0 to 60 in around about 4.5 seconds so it's definitely no slouch in that department either um it's kind of i'd say probably not up to par with some of the other kind of cards this will probably be grouped into um i think when it comes to sadly to grouping although this will be kind of the more affordable one i feel like it'll be kind of grouped in with stuff like the porsche cayman um the supra and other cars along those lines sadly and it will kind of sort of maybe damage the way people look at the performance specs but if you take this car as it is um it's definitely no slouch but with all the you know specs and stats out of the way let's talk about the car when it comes to gran turismo so how does it really feel in gran turismo and uh, to be honest it feels great now it is rear wheel drive but it almost feels like it's running on four wheel drive it feels very very good it feels like there's a ton of grip no matter what you're doing through the corners it never kind of feels like it's just going to break away from you and uh, i feel like the ride height's kind of perfect for it like you get enough of a feel of the car moving around without it kind of either bottoming out or kind of just you know throwing its rear end out and putting you in a barrier um at no point around you know the, the lap did i ever feel like you know i was going to be kind of ruining my whole lap by being thrown in a barrier or having that awful snap oversteer that you sometimes get in gt7 with the road cars um, i was definitely impressed in the way it handled and uh, when it comes to braking it stops absolutely fine and um, it doesn't kind of suffer through what some of the cars do where you'll slam on the brakes and it, you just got no chance of making the corner um, it's definitely you know no slouch at getting that speed down getting yourself through the corner and getting yourself back out the other side so that will bring us on to acceleration and top speed when you're accelerating out of a corner it feels absolutely fine and um, there's you know a really good feel of this you know power coming in top speed wise it's not too bad um, i believe it was about 150 i topped out at uh, the car we're using as well has uh, the nine speed auto transmission so it has nine gears uh, which is pretty crazy i believe they'll also be doing a six speed manual in real life but the one we've got in the game has the nine speed so there's plenty of gears to get yourself up through however i feel like in the standard form you won't really have to use all nine um but yeah, I mean, top speed wise, as you can see, we're on a straight here and I was hitting a, between about 150, 160. So uh, yeah, no slouch in the top speed department. And last but not least, sound design. Um, personally, I think it sounds absolutely great. So have a listen to this. I feel like it definitely has that typical Nissan V6 sound and uh, yeah it's pretty iconic sound uh, we all know it we've all heard it um, but that is going to be the lap coming to an end now and I absolutely enjoyed my time even with this car in its standard form but obviously that is not it we're going to have a look at the onboard of the car check out the interior uh, i'll give you some opinions on that then we'll look at where it came overall uh, sadly i forgot to put my individual sector times in this video uh, so yeah kind of sorry about that and then obviously after that we'll jump into the modified version of this car so interior wise i feel like it's a very modern very sleek looking and it actually looks like a quite a nice place to be um, I kind of wouldn't complain if I was behind the wheel. Um, it looks, you know, quite nice. It sometimes looks a bit plasticky, 
um, you know, under certain lighting. Uh, but I absolutely love the, you know, the triple gauges we've got at the top and kind of, you know, that display we have for the uh, speedometer and stuff like that. Um, I just think it looks absolutely awesome. Um, so when it comes to interior view, I think, uh, you know, Polyphony has done an absolutely awesome job of kind of bringing the interior to life. And personally, I really do, you know, highly rate the interior of this car. Um, so, yep, no complaints in that department. So overall, we did a 8 minutes, 2 seconds, 0.995, which puts this car top of the 500pp category by an absolute margin. So uh, previously, it was the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 4. So, I mean, what's that going to be? Nearly, what, 25 years or so uh, when it comes to difference, uh, age difference, and it's around about 19 second gap. So with all the standard stuff out of the way, welcome this. This is probably one of the most mental cars I have in my garage. Um, absolutely awesome to drive. I've kind of got it in sort of a, uh, a drift spec, so it's not the easiest to control. Um, I didn't expect it to be the easiest to control either, uh, jumping back into it. And uh, yeah, it's definitely a whole heap of fun. So this is my modified uh, Z Performance and uh, it's an absolute monster i believe it's putting out about 700 to 800 brake so on to our modified lap at the high speed ring and uh, yeah it's an absolute crazy car and uh, we finally get to use all nine gears um this time we're going to hit the speeds of around about 222 miles per hour as we get down to the left hander at the bottom of here um, it definitely you know gripped to the track through this section however i did find at that final corner you'll probably seem to have a little uh, a bit of an off um, however we didn't hit the barrier so it's got to count and uh, you'll kind of see what happened it's a bit of a handful um, under acceleration and there's kind of certain corners this car doesn't like um, however i hope with a bit of tuning it should kind of bring it back in however i do have it set up in pretty much a drift style um, because I absolutely love kind of going around Tokyo getting the back end of this thing out and um, that's kind of where it excels but it's a ton of horsepower it's rear wheel drive and you're going to see me have my little slip here as it just kind of snaps <laughs> but we do kind of keep it out of the barrier and uh, get ourselves around the final corner and uh, we'll get ourselves over the line so absolutely awesome looking absolutely awesome sound and uh, we finally do our second ever lap of our modified showdown so with our lap done let's have a look is it going to overtake the sirocco and it does by around about just over four seconds uh, kind of expected obviously that snap has probably cost it a bit of time and um, so i do believe it could have probably done it in about 105 um, but definitely just shows the raw pace of this car and um, but to be honest i'm surprised it's you know kind of that close between the sirocco and the z so the Sirocco is definitely no slouch. Um, so if you watched that video yesterday, you know that was the original lap setter. So what's my overall opinion on this car? I've seemed to have just praised it constantly, uh, but it's a car that I'm actually on the fence about. And I feel like over time, and the more racing games I see it in, or the more times I maybe see one around, which I won't because I'm in the UK, um, I do feel like it, you know, it would have had that chance to really grow on me. Um, but out of the box, I mean, yes, performance-wise and feel-wise, it's absolutely awesome. And you can make the most insane drift cars out of it. Um, but I'm just kind of on the fence about it right now. And I can't really tell you why, because it should really be an absolutely awesome car. But I feel like over time, it really will grow on me. So that's the end of the video. Do not forget to like, comment and subscribe. It really helps me out. Massive thank you to those that support me each and every day. I'll hopefully see you all in the next one. Cheers, guys. Peace.